Nowadays, it's rare to get a good movie from Hollywood that actually tries to entertain the audience with a well-crafted and brilliantly written story, instead of just lecturing them with some ill-informed opinion about how horrible they are from their million-dollar mansions. But every once in a while, the cesspit that is known as Hollywood will churn out a fantastic movie that reminds us why we like to watch films in the first place, and The Holdovers is one of those movies. Now, I'm a simple man, I see Paul Giamatti in a movie and I watch it. And after finally watching The Holdovers, all I can say is that it's a superb movie which I highly recommend to anyone. I was genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed seeing it. I know this was nominated at the Oscars for the Best Picture, which really doesn't mean much to most people since the Oscars are shit, but this one is actually good. The premise is about a history professor called Paul Hunnam who works at a prestigious boarding school called Barton Academy. He is a reclusive and anti-social teacher that is hated both by his students and fellow teachers alike, and because he is so disliked by the faculty, he ends up being stuck with the miserable job of supervising children whose parents have left them behind at school over the Christmas. These kids are referred to as holdovers, and at first there are several of them, but as one of the rich kid's parents offers to take them all skiing, Angus Tully, the only holdover whose mother can't be reached, has to stay behind all alone at the school with Paul. So of course, these two start off hating each other as they are both forced to be together during the holidays. But as the story unfolds and their relationship deepens, they begin to bond with one another. Paul sees a younger version of himself in Angus, and Angus sees a father figure in Paul. Accompanying these two is the school chef Mary Lamb, who has her own set of problems as she is dealing with the loss of her son and has decided to spend Christmas at the last place they were both together, which is this school. So we have three very lonely people spending the holidays with each other, each with their own set of problems at an elite boarding school. Paul's job as a history teacher also reflects his character, as he is a man obsessed with the past and is still working at the same school he graduated from. He has dreams he has never fulfilled and has even stopped trying to pursue relationships, but his fascination with the past is just an excuse for him to stop looking towards the future and actually trying to accomplish something, simply because he is afraid he might fail. And it's only after he spends Christmas with Angus does he eventually get the balls to finally go on and pursue those goals he once had. Then we have Angus, the other main character, who is a neglected kid that has been kicked out of many schools for misbehaving. We eventually find out he does this because he feels abandoned by his mother who has got a new man in her life and spends more time sucking him off than looking after her own son. As he grows closer to Paul, he begins to notice that they are both suffering from similar problems, and Paul recognises that Angus is at the same critical point in his life that Paul was, which turns his life upside down. So by the end of the movie, Paul makes sure that Angus doesn't end up following down the same path as he did, even to his own detriment. The third character, Mary, has her dealing with the loss of her son, and even though her role is smaller than the other two, her inclusion in the story is a massive benefit. The actress who plays her does a great job, the three of them have great chemistry with one another, and Mary's character helps provide a good dynamic between Paul and Angus. I find that similar movies like this tend to run out of drama and just drag on, but that doesn't happen here, as Mary's inclusion adds a good amount of plot to the story and keeps things interesting. Now, from the summary, the holdover sounds kind of depressing, since it deals with heavy topics like abandonment, depression and grief, but there's actually a lot of charm and humour to be found in it. Paul Giamatti, in particular, is very funny to watch, as we see him completely fail to communicate with normal people. This is for you. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This is for you. So you just get this for everybody? Or despite torturing his students with training regiments in the middle of winter, he himself cannot even throw a ball. The lightheartedness really adds a lot of charm to the movie, and the comedy really makes this film a joy to watch. The Holdovers also has enough drama to keep the audience engaged, but doesn't overplay it and become ridiculous. It's organic and avoids feeling repetitive. The acting is great across the board, the dialogue is well written, the characters are all likeable, the soundtrack is good, and the cinematography is excellent. The film is set in the 1970s, and the director has intentionally made sure that the movie itself looks like it was made during that decade. 
you can see that immediately with the opening credits and how grainy the film looks, which is a nice touch. I've also got to praise the writers for not diluting the story with social messaging that has absolutely nothing to do with the plot. Since this is set in the 70s in a prestigious elite school, it would have been so very easy for the writers to have put in messages about racism or sexism to score brownie points from the critics. But thank god they had the maturity not to do so, as that is not what the movie is about. It's about the relationship with Paul and Angus, and how they both grow as individuals. Everyone who hasn't seen it should go and watch it, or if you already have seen it, watch it again, because why not? Paul Giamatti alone is enough of a reason to do so, as he elevates everything he's in. So yeah, that was The Holdovers, a great fucking movie. Yeah. I may go to bed relatively hate-free.